Hey guys, Pastor Sean here. And in this video, I'm gonna be discussing the topic of healing. And I wanna discuss, you know, the will of God in regards to that. Many of you out there may be dealing with an illness right now. You may have diabetes or you may have uh, a physical ailment of arthritis. Maybe you're struggling with, you know, the remnants from that COVID virus that you, you uh, contracted a while back. And now you're trying to get fully healed or you may have a heart condition, who knows what it may be, but God is in the healing business. And I wanna get into the word of God and I wanna read in scripture. I'm gonna be reading out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, and I'm, the, I'm gonna discuss God's will in regards to this topic. So without further ado, I'm gonna go right into the word of God. And I believe that God has a word for you today. So I'm going right into the scriptures, Isaiah chapter 53. But before I read the word of God, if you have not subscribed to this channel, I encourage you to smash that subscribe button below and uh, like this video if you could, because it'll help bring more traffic to this channel. And I do appreciate all your support. So anyway, Isaiah chapter 53, and I'm going to read verse four. It's talking about Jesus. It's 700 BC when this was written approximately. So this was 700 years before Christ came, but it was talking about Jesus. And it says, surely he hath borne our griefs. He carried our griefs. And it says, and he carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. That means Jesus was afflicted. He was on the cross. He suffered. He died. He was crucified for you and for me and for the entire world. He gave his life as a willing sacrifice. Verse five, and it says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Why did he do it? Because of our sins. We all have sin, sinned and come short of the glory of God. So none of us are perfect. And so Jesus gave his life. He died so that your sins would be washed away, past, present, and future. It says he was wounded for our transgressions, not just our past, but our present and future. He died for all of our sins. It says he was bruised for our iniquities. Iniquities is uh, all kinds of immorality, sin, whatever it may be. And it says the chastisement of our peace was upon him. He was chastised so that we could have the peace of God. He was scourged, crucified, so that you could have the Prince of Peace living on the inside of you if you accept him. And then it says, and with his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes, he was whipped, he was bruised, he was beaten. He gave his life, he took all that. And it says, with his stripes, we are healed. Now, some may argue and say, well, that's a spiritual healing. Well, that's not the case at all. I want to explain it in scriptures and show you how that's really literally a spiritual, not just a spiritual, but a physical healing. By his stripes, we are healed. So God's will is to heal. Now you say, not everybody gets healed. You know what? I'm not going to draw a doctrine on who gets healed, who doesn't get healed, why this certain thing happens, why somebody we prayed for didn't get healed, because we don't know, you know, God's mysteries. We don't know everything. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Those things which are revealed belong unto us. So there's some things I can't explain why some people don't get healed. But the Bible is clear. He says, by his stripes we are healed. So if you can claim that, you will. You can claim that every day. Start quoting healing verses. And you know what? You will be healed. What does the scripture say? It says it all over the Bible. It says it in in. Third John, verse 2, it says, you know, I wish that you prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. He wishes, above all things, that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So he's wishing for you to be in health. It's God's will for us to be healthy. So you say here, it says, healing is in the atonement. We are atoned. That means all our sins are forgiven and washed. He was the propitiation of our sins. That means he satisfied everything with his sacrifice that was the satisfactory sacrifice so that all our sins would be forgiven so it says by his stripes we are healed so those who say that that's a spiritual healing and not a physical one i want to prove it to you in scripture in the, in the gospels it refers to these verses in the gospels of matthew chapter 8 in verse 16 it says when the even was come they brought unto him that's jesus many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, which we just read. 
saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. See how it talks about healing. That's in regards to healing. It's not talking about a spiritual healing. It's talking about a physical healing. He was healing everybody that had diseases. And right there, it corroborates the word of God. It supports Isaiah 53 as a physical healing. By his stripes, we are healed physically. The spiritual part is it says he was bruised for our transgressions. He was wounded for our iniquities. That was the spiritual part of the healing. The latter part of that verse in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5 says, and with his stripes, by his stripes, we are healed. That's a physical healing. Isn't that amazing? The book of James chapter 5 and verse 15, it says, the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. The word of God says that word save. If you look into the Greek there, that word is sozo. Save is sozo. And that word sozo is heal. So if you read that verse again, it says, the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. So we need to pray in faith. How do we get healed? We pray in faith. How do we get healed? We quote the word of God. How do we get healed? We believe in his word. And we begin to quote that word over our lives. Look at what it says here. It says in verse 16 of Matthew 8, it says, When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. You know what? Demonic activity can bring sickness upon you. Do you realize this? The devil wants you sick. You know what? Some things that we do, we bring upon ourselves. We're not eating right. We're eating too much sugar or whatever. We raise our sugar levels. I mean, we, we do things. We don't eat properly. We go fast food. We go get a Big Mac every day. We, you know, we, we go out to Wendy's. We go here and there. It's okay to do it once in a while but we're doing it all the time, we're going to bring health issues to our lives. So we've got to have that balance, you know, eat good, eat properly. That's fine. That'll help you. That's part of the healing. But also demonic activity in your life, that's a problem. Satan is going to bring his spirits and Jesus had to cast it all out and then he healed them. So that means the devil can bring sickness and disease upon you. You need to quote the scripture every day. If you're feeling a symptom, an ache, a pain, if you're feeling something in your life, maybe you're having a long haulers from COVID, you know, and you're feeling these symptoms come on, just say, by his stripes, I am healed. No plague will come nigh my dwelling. He will deliver me from the noisome pestilence, the scriptures say in the book of Psalm 91. Just keep quoting it. Say, you know what? He said in his word, the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. The book of Malachi says he will rise with healing in his wings. Malachi chapter 4. He's going to rise with healing in his wings. The Bible says all over. He says your faith have made you whole. Whole from what? Physical ailments. We need to start believing. We need to start quoting the word of God. We need to start believing. What does it say in the book of Psalm 107 verse 20? He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. What is the book of um, Proverbs chapter 4? If you read it, verse 20, 21, 22, it says, it is life unto those that find it and health to all your flesh. Start reading the word. Scriptures say a faithful ambassador is health. God wants to bring health. He wants to heal your body. He wants to heal you of all of these things, even terminal cancer. We had somebody in our church, stage four brain tumor. He had it in this church and there was no cure. They gave him a year to live. He came up to the altar. We prayed in faith. We anointed him with oil. According to James chapter five and verse 15, the prayer of faith shall save the sick. It shall heal the sick and we believed and that tumor started shrinking he went back in a second time the tumor was gone the doctors were dumbfounded they were baffled and that was one of the great miracles that we've seen in our church but this church our church abundant grace church here in Derry, we believe in healing we do altar calls for healing we've seen many miracles we've seen god heal lupus we've seen god heal arthritis we've seen god heal diabetes we've seen god heal brain tumors. We've seen God heal so many things in this church, and God wants to heal you. But we need to be praying. We need to believe. We need to quote the Word of God, because the Word of God is quick, powerful, and it will heal you. He's a great God. I hope this is encouraging you today. I just want to read another scripture. Over in the book of uh, Psalm chapter 103 and verse uh, one, it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Verse two says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Don't forget him. Quote him. Recite him each day. Because what's verse three say? Who healeth, oh, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. He says he forgives all your sin, right? You believe that. Everybody's like, I'm saved. My sins are forgiven. But the second part says he heals all your diseases. 
Healing is in the atonement. When you get saved, not only does he forgive your sin, but he heals your body. All you have to do is believe it. If we don't believe we're forgiven of sin, we'll feel guilty and we won't receive that forgiveness even though we're already forgiven. If we don't believe that we're healed even though we're feeling these symptoms and we're not feeling good, if we don't believe God's word and we're going to stay in that same position. We need to just receive, believe, quote, be positive. Believe what God can do. He wants to heal your body. So I want to encourage you today to continue to believe. He says he forgives and heals. He's a great God, isn't he? But I love what it says. Jesus, what does it say? He healed all that were sick, not some, all, with his word. The word of God is what's going to heal you, beloved. Quote it in faith. Get some healing verses. Start believing. God wants to do miraculous things in your life. He loves you. He died for you. He cares for you. He said healing is in the, in the atonement. Don't believe that lie that says that God only heals some people. He doesn't heal others. And, you know, he only heal whatever. You know what? Yeah, God does heal some and, and others don't get healed. But don't believe that lie that says, you know what? God is not a healer because he is a healer. He's able to do more than you can ask or think. All he's looking for you to do is believe him, eat right, exercise, read your word, pray, thank him for the healing in advance because that's faith. Say, Lord, thank you for the healing in advance because I know that you're more than able to do more than I could ask or think. He's a great God. He wants to do that for you. If this devotion blessed you, I encourage you uh, to put a comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. And thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day in the Lord. And God bless you.